Hi, so uh, this is the the return of the Quick Nuclear Science Weekly Show. This is the not the second part; it's the uh, second episode, I guess we'll call it here. Uh, if you have a good name, you know, think of it. Sorry, I'm a bit muffly. I was sick today, and so the last time, uh, admittedly, the uh, audio and video quality wasn't so great. So this time, it's at on the table, you know. So it's gonna be rocking around a little bit, and I hear the the microphone on this camera. Isn't so good, sorry about that. And, um, it's not so good because it's an underwater camera. So if you want to see something underwater, yeah, but I'm going to try to talk really loudly. I'm almost, ah, uh, not quite almost yelling, but I'm close. And this camera is just going to remain on the table like this. So today I thought we'll do a review of this, the, um, Amprobe AM240, right there. So I showed you this in my, um, room uh, electronics lab tour it normally is up next to the VGA monitor. I'm not going to move the camera because it's this horrible noise as you found out last time. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. I'll save you guys from the horrible noise and the probes it comes with. Is this camera rendering the color red properly? These are just a regular red. Is that is that rendering properly? It's hard to see on the screen. Uh, it doesn't look like it. But um, yeah, so tell me how the uh, audio quality and video quality is on this one. So anyway, I'm going to be reviewing the Amprobe M240 multimeter. So this multimeter is the same as the M220 that uh, Dave reviewed on the EV blog, except it has... Uh, there we go, we can see it now. Temperature, Fahrenheit and Celsius. But like I showed on my uh, lab tour, I guess you'll call it. Can you, can you guys see the screen? Yes, we can. 63 degrees. And it's like 69, 70, not 62 in here. So it's completely broken, and T-Equipment.net sent this to me without a thermocouple. And they said, oh, you send it back, and we'll give you an entirely new multimeter with the Pro. Well, they didn't send it to me the first time, so why would they send it to me the second time? So I figured, why bother, and I kind of need the multimeter. I don't need it, but I want to have it. Too much work to pay for return postage and fill out forms, so I'm not doing it. So anyway, it's, it's not a bad multimeter. It's a good multimeter. And you guys are like, well, why would I pay for... You know, a $50 multimeter like this, but I could buy a $10 multimeter like this. You've seen this one before, it's the generic Cheapo. Well, let me tell you, this multimeter, it won't measure anything unless you really push in the probes. So, and the screen also is terrible, and the range switch has about broke. So, uh, also the whole feature doesn't work. So, I mean, not that this manual hold is very useful, but it doesn't work, you know, it's a feature. Work. And also the uh, this 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 uh, thing has broke after just a couple months of use. Well, actually, more than a year. But you see, it just it broke. Uh, that's not good. You don't want your brain to be breaking. So, yeah. So spend the extra money, get an amp probe. Your camera get moved. Uh, there's going to be horrible noise there, I think. But anyway, yeah. So this multimeter, it's really rugged. You can feel it. Um, I'm not going to take it apart here. Uh, because I don't know why do you need to see the inside. You can see it other places. So anyway, I'm not going to be telling you how to use it, just how it is, so... From someone who's used to cheap multimeter, of course I'm going to think it's really nice. So we have AC volts, auto-ranging. DC volts, auto-ranging. We have a... a, um... Resistance... Uh... Resistance... Uh... Continuity... Diode test and capacitance mode. Uh, we have Fahrenheit and Celsius, you can switch between them. Um, but they have to ramp up. I don't know why that is, if that's the microcontroller inside doing something funky, or if that's the temperature sensor. It's got hertz. This feature is really handy, but I don't think this thing is true RMS, so, um, you know, your hertz and the duty cycle are going to be off if you're measuring a non-true side wave, but it does hertz and duty cycle, so that's nice, especially if you don't have a real oscilloscope. Like you just have some cheap thing like this, which I did last one. Uh, last, last video, or whatever. So we have micro amps, milliamps, amps, and two oppositions. So, it's really nice, and it's got all the usual stuff. Um, relative, range, switch between hertz and percentage. We have really cool red backlight. Just turn it on to the amp setting and hold that, and cool backlight. Oh, uh, like I said, red doesn't really render properly on this uh, multi- on the, not on the multimeter, the yeah, camera, sorry. And you see it goes away after a couple seconds. That's kind of annoying. I haven't found any way to switch that. And we have a select key that will switch between uh, ohms. 
ohms, Fahrenheit, Celsius, um, you know, all, all that stuff right there. But uh, range switch is nice. Um, input jacks are nice. Probes are really nice, especially compared to the cheap ones. I'm not sure on the other cheap one if it's actually the multimeter case, the uh, contacts, or the probes, but on this one... Oops. But on this one, uh, you know, the probes work, you just plug them in. So, yeah, that works out pretty nicely. So that's nice, and then I just keep these things on, just keeping them, you know, nice tip, uh, nice metal, you know, good quality. So yeah, I like it. So I, I give it a review. Ooh, thumbs up. Yeah. So, after talking about the, uh, Ampro AM240 multimeter, we got to talk about science, yeah. Science. Science is what this is all about. Not really, it has electronics too, but got to include some science, so we're going to talk about the space shuttle. So, about the space shuttle. Uh, NASA's canceling it. Um, why are they canceling it? Probably because of money constraints. It's getting old. The public wants something new, I bet. But, uh, do I agree with them? No. Do they care? Nope. So, um, yeah. So, they're canceling it, and I think there's only two shuttles left as of now. Although, there might be three. I'm not quite sure. I'm not doing any research on this. Just talking about science because I want to talk about science. So, yeah, they're canceling it. I don't like it. I don't like it because, one, I mean, our um, on-man space, space missions, bad. Uh, no, of course not. They're better than manned space missions. Why do I say that? Because companies are mad when it gets moved to manned space stations. It costs more money, takes more time, you know, more effort. Bad stuff, generally, for, uh, you know, something in space, which is already costing you a couple million, billion dollars. So, yeah, that that is okay. And they're replacing it with something called Orion, I think, which is more the style of the uh, Apollo, Apollo missions. Not really that it's going to the moon. I, I hope they're taking it to the moon, but uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's more in the style of the Apollo missions in that it rides up on the rocket on the top and it uh, comes down and lands in the ocean and it picked up by the the Navy, I think, or big boats, uh, warships, you know, the Navy. Excuse me if I'm making this, getting this wrong. I don't mean to get it wrong. I just haven't done my research like I should. But this video series, I can do research if I want, but more than likely, no research. So, um... Yeah, I guess they get picked up by the Navy. And that uh, costs lots of money, so I feel that they're going to be running fewer manned space missions. And manned space missions are cool just because they're slightly dangerous, and admittedly humans are attracted to danger, but that's why you will go on the zip line, jump off the cliff. You know, not, not jump off the cliff like you die, but jump off the cliff and, you know, into water or something. You know, you'll uh, go on the giant swing, whatever. So, yeah, they're attracted to danger of it. So that, that can be, you know, sort of cool about it, uh, unless you're the astronaut, in which case you're like, uh, you know, holy, oh my god, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. Uh, you know, I hope you're not like that, but, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you were. So, um, yeah, and then also, that's what the public expects of NASA. They expect plenty of manned space missions. They're getting that with the space shuttle, almost to the fact where if a person makes it into space, it's not even that notable. And if you really think about it, that's quite a notable experience. So when it gets more rare, people will probably be more observant of how um, it, uh, how cool it is, how how remarkable it is, how awesome it is, how special it is that uh, humans are riding um, essentially bombs into space. Uh, they're countering gravity, which most of us can't counter more than a foot or two by jumping up in the air. Uh, you know, I, yeah, so, there's that. So that's cool, but, uh, you know, if the public doesn't like it, then, uh, it may eventually reach the point where NASA starts losing funding, and you can't stop funding science. Funding science is, not funding science is bad, because you might not feel the effects right away, but eventually, uh, you will lose science. Like, 
yeah, you'll lose science, you lose scientists, probably, you lose cool inventions, like lots of lots of funded science that we're doing now. Are we gonna feel the effects in 30 years? I doubt it. But within 100 years, we'll see some cool inventions come from it. So yeah, so I don't I don't like it, but you know it's their decision. I can't influence it, so we can enjoy the last space shuttle launches while they can, and I hope they all go successfully. You know, nobody gets killed. So. Yeah, but, uh, I think they should, even if they were continuing the space shuttle, rarely, once every two years, once every five years, just to continue. It's so cool to have a reusable space station, not space station, space rocket thing that flies down and lands on a strip, you know? Must be quite more luxurious than living in a small space capsule. So, after our talk on the space shuttle, not our talk, after... I talk to you, and you don't get to say anything about it, because this is a one-way video, not a conference call or whatnot. After I talk to you and tell you what I think, and you will be transformed by my power of brain. Not really. I'm not very persuasive. But, after you've heard what I have to say, why am I interrupting you with batteries? Well, because I built laser jet. I'm going to try to show it off without ever moving the camera, because when it does, as you heard in the last video, the audio, it gets all like, <laughs> and uh, you can't hear me. Not that you can hear me much anyways, but better to hear me a bit, I guess, unless you don't like me, in which case, oh, too bad for you. Let me know if I'm talking loudly enough. So this is laser tag, right? We have a, um, can you see that trigger right there? Yeah, there we go. It's got um, LCD from SparkFun. It's got an infrared trigger. Now, the way this works is it only works in the dark. Do I want it to be that way? No. But the way it works is these things, this infrared sensor is from SparkFun, just cheap, $2 for an emitter and detector. <coughs> they cost about $2, so pretty cheap. And just sending infrared, just pure infrared, non-modulated, nothing, uh, really only works for a couple of uh, inches. So... These things are very well triggered by ambient light. So if anybody knows a way to... But anyway, in the light, you'll see it's going to continuously get hit. Right? Seven... Eight... So it continues to get gets hit every three or five seconds. Probably about three. And as you can see, when I pull the trigger, listen for the noise. The laser shows up. And this can also hit across the room. We get these little sensors, right, from SparkFun. I'll probably put a link in the uh, post. Modulated. Um, I don't care the range, you know, 38, 39, 40 kilohertz. Whatever. Be it whatever you like. But just using the two. Using an Arduino. Because this, this LCD is based on, Ar 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 on an Arduino, sorry. I'll also post the link for that in SparkFun. So, but anyway, this is meant to work in the dark. I don't have another one to show you, but uh, I could bounce it off the mirror, but I'll just show you what it does. Basically, it detects if there's light on the sensor. So, this thing functions more like a, a, a human seeable light spectrum than it does an infrared. Because we should not be able to see any non any nanometers. If you can, you have a problem. But it will show up. I'm, there's no IR LEDs on this. There's just an IR receiver. But IR will show up on campus. So if I happen to do that one time, it is not that you are um, awesome and have some superhero ability. It's that cameras can see it too. So that's the way I used to test it, if anybody's doing it. But if anybody knows a good way to modulate it, just using pure sensors, just not PIR sensors, using a, um, using just pure, uh, photo transistor, uh, infrared photo transistor, and an infrared LED, then write it in the comments, because I, I want to know, but everybody else does too. So, let's plug this in, and you guys will get to see it work, and we'll get to see my dog go crazy over the laser. So, uh, you gotta have something funny in it, right? Am I, 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 I admit, I'm probably a little boring. So, we'll screw on the battery cover. The batteries will pop out otherwise. So, you get to see the laser tag. Why? Why not? So, yeah, here we go. So, here's the LCD. Oh, we'll rotate that around. But anyway, in the light, you'll see it's gonna continuously get hit. Right? Seven... A, so it continues to get hit every three or five seconds, probably about three. And as you can see, when I pull the trigger, listen for the noise, the laser shows up. 
and this can also hit across the room. This dog, and we'll pull the trigger. Oh, can you see that? Oh, no, you can't. Trust me, it's going way across the room, and it'll go way far outside easy, too. So, will it show up on the white column? No. Okay, but anyway, we can see my dog chase around the lizard, so... Yeah, see? And I'll probably upload more of this as a separate clip, but don't count on it, you know? Depends on how many views this video gets. So right now I'm just holding the trigger, she's going crazy. But anyway, to see this work, we just have the lights here consistently on, showing your position, the battery cover. So that is laser tag. And also last time I said you can see the video game in one of these. I'm not going to do that because I already have a video explaining the video game. Uh, it takes a while for it to be on, but either just be patient or get lucky when you're fast forwarding the video to see it actually work. Um, it's not that great, admittedly, because I messed up soldering it, and for some reason, uh, one of the rows, the row it skips, like the, the third or fourth row, uh, does not work. So, yeah, and also the outer columns don't work, so it's just the three in the middle with the four rows. So, uh, yeah, so, that's that, but take a look at the video if you're interested. So, uh, if there's something you want to see me do on this, please tell me. Hope you liked it, hope the audio and video quality was better. And right now, it should be the loudest, because I'm talking right into the microphone. So if this is what I have to do, then I'll probably find a better way to do it. Like, take the video and find a camera with a better microphone. But probably... Oh, I have an idea. Okay. Uh, sorry, you guys might want to fast forward a couple of seconds. I'm going to show you a video of what this camera takes underwater. So, ready for bad audio? Bad audio. We're in the bathroom. And, don't worry, I'm not going to put the camera in the toilet. There we go. Alright. Drain closed. Please have the camera closed. Yeah. So, let's go with the water, shall we? And then you will see what it looks like to be underwater. Probably not. But... Oh, so that's probably enough. Alright. Ready? One, two, three. Blue. Alright. Can you hear me in the water? Alright, the water is completely still now. Can you hear me? The water is completely still. Alright, the water is completely still now. Can you hear me? The water is completely still. Okay, so that was pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And let's do some sort of cool fade out into the water. And I'm talking right into the mic again, so I should be rendering it pretty good. Ready? Ooh.